What's up, vinyl community? Cliff the Vinyl Cheapskate here. Uh, coming at you with a Friday drinking music. Uh, drinking this here. Anderson Valley Summer Solstice beer. Uh, this is a sale seasonal from my local record shop around the corner. Five bucks for a six pack. Can't go wrong. Refreshing. Maltier than I thought it would be. But anyway, tonight, got a special one. Uh, not super special. This one's uh, inspired by a stream that uh, Marty Worm did solo a couple weeks ago. He had uh, uh, Mike from Uncommon Power and Eric from High Defamation Television on talking about uh, crossover punk metal whatever. Uh, so I thought I would show some uh, heavy metal punk mixes, hybrids of my own that are from my collection here. A uh, bunch of my favorites. Uh, not all LPs. I got a couple 7 inches and a couple tapes uh, to show tonight. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was a good idea. I enjoyed the stream. Uh, I watched most of it. I didn't watch all of it, but I watched most of it. So figured, why not? I'll throw up my own video about it. Uh, show you guys some stuff to check out. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this one and find some new music. Uh, I'm going to show everything and I'm going to try to put I got ten, I'm going to show ten records. I'm going to try to put uh, links to videos in the description so that you can check them out yourself. But anyway, let's get started. Start out with what we're listening to. This is going to be one of the records. Uh, some Swedish hardcore. Uh, definitely some metallic guitar riffs in there. Uh, a little noisier than your your uh, standard your standard Swedish hardcore. And there's some of that Crasher Krusty beat stuff going on. Real good stuff. Uh, this is Domstom. Uh, great. Swedish hardcore. Uh, a friend of mine actually picked this up for me from Sweden when she went in the early 2000s and she came home and gifted me this record which makes this a special one for me. I'll probably never get, get, get rid of this. I doubt she's watching but I'm going to say thank you anyway because I love this record. I think it's a great record. Like I said, just really noisy, kind of bit of like Disclose influence. Swedish metallic hardcore stuff. This is great. But yeah, that's what we're listening to. First one of the night. Uh, the name of this album is... Oh yeah, I'm not reading that. Nope. If you can... Let's see if we can get it there. It's not even gonna... Nah. That's alright. But yeah, check this record out. If you get a chance, it's fun stuff. You'll get a sample. I might not put a sample of this one because it's playing right now. Uh, next, let's move on to tapes. Got a couple tapes here. Uh, these are some newer bands doing some uh, more black metal infused punk metal. It's like black metal infused with some punk. Got some punk, punk drumming and stuff like this. This band. Kuka, Kuka Alamuku is a Hawaiian uh, a Hawaiian native uh, puts out a ton of tapes he does a lot of really cool stuff he did, he did a uh, I think he did an Ebony Pendant split I believe let me know if I'm wrong if any metal people want to correct me please do but I picked these up. Uh, this has this is a little bit of like a bit of punk drumming. It's really raw black metal, but it's really good. Uh, productions all over the place. Just really good uh, surf rock parts in some of these. I don't know if there's any in this one, but in some of his other stuff, he does surf rock. 
like surf rock interludes that just fit perfect for some reason. But check this band out, they're from Hawaii. Uh, cool stuff. Yeah. Next up, we got another tape. Uh, this one is on Caligari Records. Uh, this one's an EP, uh, Sign of Evil. This band really, really reminds me of the band Devil Master, uh, but a little more on the psychedelic tip. Uh, a lot of D-beatenness, a lot of black metal. It's got kind of that wavy guitar sound that's real popular in black metal right now. Uh, seems to be not real popular, but there's a couple bands doing it. Like, uh, like I said, Devil Master and uh, Spirit Possession. They're another one that's doing that same sound. And this is kind of in that same vein, but a little more on the, the end of like uh, Midnight with psychedelic parts and stuff like that. So really cool stuff. Uh, Sign of Evil. It comes on this really, it came on this pretty sick looking yellow tape too. I'll show you the cool looking yellow tape. I liked this tape when it came in. Sorry about the glare, guys. My lights are right over top here, so. It was actually my second time filming this. I filmed it and I tried to use my son's computer and uh, there was no sound. So, yeah. All right, next up, another one. This one, in my opinion, is a total classic. Uh, this is a band from the 90s, early 2000s. I think this one came out 99-ish, I think. Let's see if I can find a date. Oh no, recorded in 95. So, this is a 90s record, Hiatus, the Brain LP. Uh, this is their self-titled, but they call it the Brain LP. Uh, this is more like super crusty, uh, super crusty like hardcore stuff. Hiatus is from Belgium, I believe. I think they're from Belgium. Where they record this? Sorry, should have did my research, huh? That one nine five studio. Yeah, I'm not sure where these guys are from, but they're European. Uh, they started out just basically being doing like straight up like crusty doom worship, uh, but kind of like moved out of that on this record, and they added a lot more like thrashy fast elements to this with like even like I feel like it even has like a little bit of like a like some like melodic death metal type stuff phased in there not a ton but a little bit I get a little bit of that uh, this is a really cool comp I think this is a cool complex record more complex than any of their other stuff uh, but check this out super fast like crusty hardcore stuff this is great. So what are we at? We're at one, two, three. We're at number four. So now we're at number five. These are in no kind of order at all. They're just randomly what I'm picking up. And that's what you're getting this time. Sorry. Uh, next up, show this one. Loud Night. Mind Numbing Pleasure. And I think I've showed this before, so I'll keep this one brief. Uh, but I think this is one of my favorite, uh, like, metal punk hybrids that I've heard in a very long time. When I heard this, this is probably one of my top five albums of 2020, 2020. I think it came out in 2020. Uh, on Vinyl Conflict Records, which is a record store that is, like, one of my goal record stores. I want to go to, uh, Richmond just to go to Vinyl Conflict. But yeah, Loud Night. I don't know what press this is. I think it's second press or something like that. This is, I have a first press one, but this one was on the cool splatter vinyl. And I actually bought this because it was cheap and I, was, I wanted to give my friend a copy of this record because we had them on our podcast. So yeah, these guys were a guest on our podcast a few months back. And... Ooh, it's static as hell. Uh, yeah, these guys were 
guests on our podcast a few months back, and they're really rad dudes. So, wanted to show this record again because I love it. It's like one of my favorites. But Loud Night, Mind Numbing Pleasure. What a great record this is. This is like a mix between DB and hardcore DB, like discharge style DB. A um, little bit of thrash, a little bit of like big helpings of Motorhead. Uh, some black metal feels in there, kind of like old Bathory feels. Just really good. A lot of stuff mixed in, but really well done. Next up, another classic band. Uh, so, classic band. This is a record that I feel like in their catalog kind of gets buried, and I think it's uh, kind of criminal. But this one here, Dark Throne, Underground Resistance. Uh, this is from, the, there was a point where Dark Throne was doing a lot of like, dbd type like db ish type stuff uh and this was one that i think was probably their best from that era uh perfect album all the way through i think this was a perfect mix of what they were trying to do there's a lot of traditional heavy metal there's some black metal feel there's a lot of db like db crusty punk feel to this this was just an excellent album, and I think this one kind of flies under people's radars. But if you get a chance to really give this one a listen, you should. Some real bangers on here. Valkyrie, Leave No Cross Unturned is like a, that's an anthem right there. But this was pretty sweet. Great album. Came with a giant poster of the, say this is quarter, giant poster of the, uh, the sleeve there, which is pretty sweet. Uh, if I could get a weird square frame big enough for this, I might hang on my wall at some point. But yeah, sick record. Like I said, one of my favorites by Dark Throne. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to put some more music on. Back. This is what we're rocking to right now. Hope it's not too loud. Hope you can hear me. Uh, the speakers are pointing that way, so I think that you're fine. You're kind of tucked in a corner here. Uh, anyway, we start stop at Dark Throne. Let's uh, keep going from there. Uh, this is a band called Sakuzu. Uh, this is a Midwestern band. Uh, I'm going to go turn this down a little because that's fucking... But yeah, this is a band called Sakuzu. Uh, Sakuzu is a another like real mishmash of styles, uh, kind of in the same vein as like the uh, Loud Night, where it's just like kind of DB, kind of uh, kind of DB, kind of a little thrashy. But this is a lot more blackened feeling uh, and a little more speed metal thrown in there. Good amount of speed good chunk of speed metal in there uh, a lot of these younger kids are mishmashing all these really cool styles and i'm really digging a lot of stuff that they're putting out uh this is midwest stuff uh really no hardcore in here this is more metal and punk mixed more than anything uh but this one got put out on i don't know sangreal records uh, but I also like that this is like the cover is like a mishmash of styles. Like you got this where it's like kind of like looks like an epic black metal kind of cr almost crusty cover with a lot of, like, kind of big uh, old school reminds you of like an old school uh, bolt thrower album or something. And then you got the back that looks like a straight speed metal back cover to me in my brain but really cool stuff uh this is a fun record uh i'll put a link to this in the description so you can check them out uh 
somebody told uh, a friend of mine told me to check this band out, and then when I did, I was I bought this without hearing them first, and then when I bought this, I was super stoked how good it was. This actually might go on next, but I did buy some new records today that I might put on there. Coming a later video. Uh, is that it? What do we got? One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I got two seven inches at the end. Let's roll with one of the seven inches, break up the style, because that's kind of almost the same style as all the other ones. Uh, let's break up the styles a little bit. Uh, next up, I got Creation is Crucifixion. Uh, Creation is Crucifixion, they lean a little more on a metalcore side, but they did everything DIY and not a ton of punk sound in there, but there's a lot of hardcore sound in there. So that's kind of where it crosses over for me. And their DIY ethic. They had a very DIY ethic. Uh, really cool band. Uh, kind of gets overlooked a lot. I think that a lot of people didn't like that they were a touch. They're just like a touch metalcore, but they're very metallic. Like, very metallic. Uh, and they did a lot of, like, very weird uh, kind of electronic stuff that might have turned some people off. Uh, electronic noise stuff in some of their things. One of their one of their records, they do like a synth cover of the uh, Zelda theme song, and I used to have that, but I sold it a while back, and now I probably wouldn't be able to get it back because I probably just don't want to spend the money that it costs to buy it back. But yeah, this is a cool band that gets overlooked a ton. So check them out. Creation is Crucifixion. Uh, another 7-inch, and then I have one more LP after this 7-inch. Uh, another classic, in my opinion. Severed Head Estate, Black Blood, Black Blood World. Uh, Severed Head Estate, another classic. Uh, this is like a mishmash of a It's kind of like a super group. Uh, I think Jack controls in this one, doing vocals, and... Todd from Tragedy is playing guitar on here. Uh, so this is just really, really cool stuff. Written by a bunch of really talented punk people. Punk hardcore people. Uh, but this is their most metallic in there. Like the songs Tune for Fucker, Failure Fucker, Constant Hum. Those three, all the three songs on here are just complete bangers. Probably some of their best work on here for sure. Or I have another L, another EP that's also my favorite that I didn't. I I just wanted to show some other formats besides just LPs. Uh, but yeah, this is great. Mallory Records, which I think I don't know. That's a smaller record label. I got a couple from them, but I think they're all Serenade State stuff. But this is sick. If you haven't heard Severed Head Estate and do you like any of like uh, the, the tragedy adjacent bands, uh, which there's a ton of them, uh, this is this is some of the best tragedy adjacent stuff right here. Just straight up great stuff. Let's try and put this back. I was having trouble earlier today. <laughs> And uh, one more, one more coming at you, and then we'll we'll call it quits. Last but not least, I've got a. This is a discography, complete studio collection of syphilitic vaginas. Uh, syphilitic vaginas are a are a like black metal band with a lot of like Motorhead and uh, I. I think they're kind of crusty, like, and they sound like they have a bit of Japanese hardcore mixed in, in my brain. Uh, maybe people think they sound different. Uh, a lot of first wave black metal sound in this one, uh, and they really do go for the Japanese aesthetic on this. Uh, they're, they're, I think they are a Finnish band or Swedish. They're no, they're, they're from. They're, they're from Scandinavia somewhere. I can't remember. Let me know in the comments if you if you remember where they're from. But they really went hard on uh, 
copying the Japanese aesthetic and the old Japanese black metal sound a bit too. So like, like if you like like bands like like Sabbath or Abigail or any of those like like more thrashy black metal bands that that come from the east, you'll probably like this. Uh, this is great. I think it's excellent. There's a lot of motor charge feel to this that really like helps it along and a lot of raw db sound in there too so this is another one where it really does walk that line of either being like hardcore punk or black metal very very good uh if you get a chance to check out any of this band's stuff you should check it out uh i think that i actually think that tommy from Tommy from uh, Tommy's Vinyl Knot. Would, you would really enjoy this, Tommy. Uh, so I'll check it out if you get a chance. I'm calling you out by name, my friend, because I think you would really dig this. Uh, but anyway, great stuff. Last record in the pile. Now I'm going to uh, continue to listen to some records, drink some beers. I'll finish up this tape get a list of the ones I bought today, which you'll see later. I have plans. I have plans to do... Uh, I have... I'm going to have enough stuff for a Vile Finds in a few weeks. Uh, and next week, I think I have something special planned. As long as one record I'm waiting for comes in before next Friday. Next Friday's Drink of Music will be a... It's not going to be a Vile Finds. It's going to be something else. So, stay tuned. And, uh... Have a good weekend, everybody. Uh, if you're going to be on Grown Man Record Night, I'm going to hop on for a little bit. Uh, anyway, well, hop on in the peanut gallery, say hello, and uh, cheers, everybody. Have a good weekend.